Hello, it's Jim from Janku, and I want to take a quick look at layers today with you in GIMP. So right now I have GIMP open and I'm using version 2.10.14. So if you're using a different version, you might have slightly different operations. I'm going to press tab to get my toolbars open so we can get started. And then I'm just going to go up to file and say new. And if you look under the advanced options here, it's saying fill with the background color. Our background color is this lower swatch right here. So it's the white color and we're setting the width to 1920 and the height to 1080. So I'm just gonna say, okay. And then I'm gonna hold down control and I'm just gonna scroll out a little bit so I can see what's going on here. And the first thing that you might be tempted to do when you're looking at creating different layers in GIMP is to actually come up to your select tool and you might start drawing shapes like a rectangle here. And then maybe you go to your fill and you, you paint it in and then draw another rectangle. And then let's say you go and you fill it in again. So one problem you might have when you do something like this is if you want to reorder these rectangles later on, they are now attached to this specific layer here. So they are part of this background canvas. So if you were to try to move any of these, they all move together and they can't be arranged independently of each other. So one way you can kind of combat that is you would create a separate layer. So over in your right hand pane, I'm in the layers pane you can see here. If you don't have yours open automatically, if you go to your windows, your dockable dialogs, you can click layers or do control L. And then you can right click in that pane and you can say new layer. And I'm gonna call this Jim's new layer. You can name it whatever you want. And then this time I'm going to fill it with transparency and I'm gonna leave the size, the normal canvas size that we used previously. So if I press okay, you can see we have a new layer here and I could actually come and I could draw a new rectangle and I could paste in here and this time, if I were to move this, it's gonna move independently of the other shapes. Now, you'll notice that it actually has a large ring around it. So you can see this yellow dotted line around it. So that's the actual layer size for this little shape we have here. So if we wanted to condense this just to the specific layer, uh, the specific blue rectangle here, we could actually go and we could crop this. And Make sure that your current layer only is selected when you're cropping. So if it's not selected and you try to crop this, it's gonna crop your whole screen. Let me just show what that might look like. So you're not gonna want that. I'm gonna do Control Z to go back. So I'm gonna make sure my current layer is selected here. And then if I zoom in, I can just crop out this specific shape here. That looks good. Make sure I'm on the layer that I wanna crop and that's Jim's new layer. And if I press enter, now that is cropped down to the specific size there. So I can move this around and this if I, again, zoom out here. Uh, if you move this around, you see that there's no longer that big ring around it. The layer is confined to the size of this little shape. And I'm just gonna press Control A to get rid of this floating selection there. Okay, so now maybe we wanna move around some of these other shapes that are already kind of attached to this canvas here. So how could we go about possibly doing that? I could actually go to my selection tool and I could select this rectangle and I could do a control X to cut it. And it's gonna cut it out of the background color there. And then I could do a control V to paste. And you'll notice on the right hand side in the layers pane, it says floating selection. If I right click on that, I can put that selection to a new layer. And then if I zoom back out, this layer now moves independent of the other layers. So we have two layers that are kind of set to the selection here, and then we have one larger layer with the background still in it. So that works all well and good. One thing that might be frustrating for people is if you were trying to go and you were trying to cut this and it's not working. So for instance, let's let's try to cut this other square out so we have this as an independent layer as well. You might be tempted to just come in here and you know, you're looking at it and you're draw, you come in here and you draw your selection and it looks like you're doing a good job and then you're pressing control X and nothing is quite happening. And you are thinking, well, why is that going on? So what's happening in here is we're actually, we have a, the, a different layer selected. So we have this other layer selected here and we're, we're trying to cut it out of no space over here. So make sure you're on the actual layer where your object is. And then you can come in here and you can do a control X and that will cut it out. And then you can control V to a new layer and now we should have three independently ordered kind of boxes here. 
Now, it's a little hard to distinguish these since they're all the same color, so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna make this background a little darker here. So I'm gonna set that color and I'm just gonna paste that layer. Then I'm gonna select this other layer here. Let's change the background again, make it even darker. And let's change that. Okay, so now we can kind of see the depth of these and you can see the order. So it looks like this is on top and then we have this next layer here uh, right below that and then this dark blue at the very bottom. So you notice that that actually, as I click around these things, on the right hand side, these select different layers. So if I click this top one, this top layer gets selected. If I click this middle one, the middle layer selected and the bottom one. So the, the order they are, appear here actually corresponds to the order that they appear in this right hand pane. So for instance, if I wanted this dark blue layer to appear on top, one way I can do that is I can actually grab it and I can pull it all the way up to the top there. So that makes it really easy to just kind of reorganize these layers and positioning these in different ways. So another thing I wanted to just kind of point out with layers is the things that you are trying to run operations on these layers, they actually are only appearing on the specific layer you have highlighted. So it's similar to the copy and paste issue, but just a different way to demonstrate it is for instance, say I was trying to draw a line across these and let's make an orange line here and I grab my paintbrush tool. If I start at the top here and I draw across, it's not gonna draw on any of these other layers besides the one that's selected. So if I come in here and I start drawing around, none of these layers will see anything, but as soon as I get on the selected layer, you, you'll notice that the, the actual artwork appears there. So that's kind of the way that this is limited to the different layer that you're specifically trying to manipulate. Hopefully that's a good intro and it gets you started. And I'll, I'll try to make more of these videos to make it a little more clear about how to manipulate things throughout GIMP. And thank you for watching.